Hello and welcome to Recipe Wars. I am Judith Jones. And I am BC Hoffman. And today we will be battling it out to see who makes the best risotto. So whose recipe are you making today, BC? I'm making Giada De Laurentiis, and uh, what's so cool about her recipe is she actually, um, she uses a vegetable stock, uh, butternut squash, and then she incorporates vanilla bean. Butternut squash and vanilla risotto is everything a great comfort food dish should be. The first thing I've done for my risotto is warmed up four cups of vegetable broth. And to that, I'm gonna add some vanilla bean and basically take a little paring knife and cut down the center of it just so I can open it up. And when you open it up, you can see that there's little vanilla seeds right in there. So here in the US, everyone always thinks, oh, but vanillas are sweet. Yeah, they are because we add sugar to them. Traditionally in Italy and other parts of the world, pretty much everywhere else in the world, vanilla is used in savory dishes. They don't add sugar to them. They use them just to incorporate and enhance the flavor of the dish that they're making. So she uses the vanilla bean in the traditional sense and the butternut squash. And what we did, we actually made a vegetable stock with the butternut squash, so that's why it has this wonderful color to it. Um, definitely, whenever you're actually doing the risotto, because it's so versatile, you can use whatever stock that you're actually gonna be then using the ingredient itself. So if you're doing a seafood risotto, use a seafood stock. If you're using a mussel risotto, use a shellfish stock. Same thing for meats. I love using a veal stock and then incorporating that. I'm making a wild mushroom and asparagus risotto by Alton Brown. Now that we have our kettle in hand, it's time to load her up. I like to keep this over on this side of the cooktop. In goes one cup of white wine and six cups of chicken broth. Homemade would of course be best, but uh, carton based would be okay too. Right to the top. Now we activate the device. Now time to apply some heat, medium heat in fact, to our pan. Then we will add two tablespoons of unsalted butter, one cup of onion, chopped very, very fine I might add, and last but not least, a wee sprinkling of the white stuff. So, let's get started, shall we? So in a saucepan, I'm gonna put the heat on and I'm gonna add my chicken stock into there. I definitely need to stress, make sure that when you're actually doing this, you want your stock to be warm. Your stock, your broth, your demi-glaze, your water, whatever you're using as your base, you want it to be nice and warm. So that way, when it is added to the risotto, it is just gonna make the process that much quicker and it won't actually shock the rice that you're using. And into my chicken stock, I'm also gonna add some nice white wine. There you go. So we wanna heat it up till it gets to simmering. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And what I'm gonna basically do, I'm gonna let this simmer and then I'm gonna slowly add in my butternut squash just till it's cooked till it's tender. So we're gonna get a large pan and into the pan, I'm gonna put my butter and my onions, which we've finely diced. And into that, a little bit of salt too. And now it's time to sweat, and not that kind of sweating, BC, the onion sweating. So we're gonna sweat these onions until they become nice and translucent for about five minutes. While you're doing that, I'm actually gonna take my vanilla bean and I am going to Literally, I split it down the middle, and we're just gonna scrape out the inside right there, has all the seeds that you want from the vanilla, and we're just gonna incorporate that into our broth. So once we do that, I'm ready to actually pull this broth off and just let it sit covered, and it's actually gonna steam the butternut squash that I put in there, and it's gonna get all that extra flavor from the vanilla bean out. So another keynote when you're doing this, again, besides the fact that you definitely wanna make sure that your stock or broth is hot, you also want to make sure that you have excess because as you're cooking the risotto, the risotto can be very fickle. So it can either come out and it needs more liquid or it needs less liquid. So every time you see a recipe for risotto, it's more of a guesstimate than an exact measurement for the risotto. And I love how our risottos are very different in the fact that yours is kind of a full risotto using the butternut squash and mine's more of a spring risotto using the asparagus and the mushrooms. 
And it's so versatile because risotto's been around for thousands of years. First introduced to Spain and Italy by the Arabs during the Middle Ages, and then became very popular um, in Milan, where it was actually the slow cooking process was a traditional technique, and it was used in the wine country at the time, served with asabuco, so they would incorporate the rice, which was one of the staples at the time. And, uh, definitely key components. You've got your risotto, you've got your onions, your saffron, your white wine, and your broth. So we're gonna traditionally do that, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw in my butter just like Judith did for her recipe, and I'm gonna melt that a little bit, throw in my onions, and then we're gonna toast our risotto. Now why do you toast your risotto instead of just throwing it in? To ensure quality consistency in your actual texture of the risotto. We're both using Arborio risotto, it's gonna have a higher starch consistency. In fact, it has the highest starch consistency as far as Italian risotto. And um, what's so beautiful about the starch, you don't wanna wash it off. You wash it off, you won't have that creamy texture in your risotto, which is the key that you're looking for in your risotto. So I've got that going, I'm gonna throw in my onions, and you're literally just gonna, you aren't gonna brown your risotto, you're just gonna get it warm to the touch. So when it's going through, you just want warm to the touch. I'm gonna sweat these onions real quick with the hot pan and the butter, should be very quickly. So we're getting our onions nice and translucent, about five minutes, and the idea is, we don't wanna get them brown, we just wanna sweat them. And if you see them brown, turn the heat down, as Alton says. So that's good right there. And we are also gonna add now in our arborio rice. In it goes. Again, when this is cooked, it's a short grain rice, so it'll become nice, creamy, chewy, and firm. And this rice is also used in rice pudding because uh, it gives it just a lovely texture. So what we're gonna do is give that a nice uh, turn in with the butter and onions. And we're gonna let that get translucent for about five minutes. Again, we don't wanna brown it, just nice and translucent. I would say about two minutes for this one at the most. Yours is going five. She's got the extra time on hers. Well, I think it's about between three and five. So let's see. Let's see how quick it goes. And the reason why you're toasting your risotto is because you don't want to actually have it absorb too much of the liquid. Because as soon as you put the liquid in, it's going to soak it up. So you want to toast it so it actually cooks the exterior prior to actually cooking the interior. Because what you want with risotto is you want the creaminess, but you also want the texture. So you want the little al dente uh, taste to the tooth. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add my half cup of dry white wine, and I'm gonna let that completely reduce. And I'm gonna add my chicken wine stock into the rice now. I've turned my heat down to low, and what we wanna do is just put in enough to cover the rice. Oh, it is on low, it is on low. Um, just enough in to cover the rice, and make sure to move the pan. And what we wanna do is we wanna get our first batch of liquid fully absorbed into the rice. So this generally takes about three minutes with the white wine. And when you are using any type of wine, you want a dry white wine, but also one that's palatable. Meaning, one that you're gonna drink that's not just used for cooking. So I would say a nice Pinot Grigio. You could even use a good Chardonnay, which will add a nice creaminess to it. So all the liquid is absorbed into the rice. And a good little trick that Alton Brown says is that take your spatula and just move it across the pan. And if you can see your pan at the bottom, it's time to put in more liquid. So we're gonna do exactly the same and put in our simmering stock, just enough to cover the rice. Yeah, I'm gonna basically be doing the same thing and I'm constantly just putting in basically a half cup at a time and keep doing this repetitively over and over again. It's gonna take roughly 30 minutes. Halfway through at about the 15 minute mark from the first time that you put in your, your half cup of broth, you're gonna wanna check it to see the texture of the actual risotto. So you're gonna wanna see what the, what the feel of it is. If it's uh, too hard, it's not quite ready. If it's too soft, it's been cooking too long, but it should take about 30 minutes, no more, no less. And you do want to stir it, not all the time, but make sure you stir it often to make sure you know it's not sticking to the bottom and it's absorbing all that liquid. So it's been about 35 to 40 minutes. I added another batch of liquid to the rice, and that is about done now. So all of that liquid is absorbed and it just looks very lovely. So finishing touches, we're gonna add in our cooked mushrooms, lovely, and some of our cooked asparagus. And obviously, you know, you can decide what veggies you wanna put in there, but this is a really nice combination. And into that, after we've turned the heat off, 
we're gonna add in our Parmesan cheese and that's just gonna give it a lovely creaminess. And the saltiness from that is gonna be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, so we'll stir all that together. Oh, that looks good. It looks very colorful, yeah. I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm at the same stage and again, I need to um, about double the amount of liquid that the recipe called for. So like I said, it is just a guesstimate. Make sure you have extra on hand. And now I'm ready to put in, I've got two extra tablespoons of butter. Um, usually you don't need to add this at the end. She does, I'm sticking to recipe that she calls for it. I wouldn't do this, it's already creamy enough in my opinion. But it also gives it a nice sheen. And then I'm gonna throw in my Parmesan cheese as well. And then now that all, that's all in, I'm gonna add nutmeg, which is a really nice little addition, and some lemon zest. And last but not least, the butternut squash. Now, if you want, um, you can totally add in your vegetable or your meat or seafood. I'd say for the last ladle of broth that you're putting in, because that will cook very quickly. Now that everything is incorporated, it is time to taste and see who is the winner of this risotto recipe war. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? Should we do yours first or mine? Ooh, I think, I think this one's more hearty, so let's go with the lighter of the two. Okay. They're both hearty. They both are hearty. Oh man, okay. I love the lemon zest that you yeah. have going and the asparagus and mushrooms. Good. I need to go in for number mm. two. Get a little mushroom That's action. That's really good. The rice is just right. Cooked to perfection. It's very creamy. Let's try the butternut squash. Butternut squash with vanilla. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Really nice flavor. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. That vanilla really stands out. Yeah. And it goes great with the butternut squash. I cooked the butternut squash just till it was just to the two. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually like it like that. I don't like it too soft. It's 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 very nice. Yeah, you already have the softness from the risotto. And you got a lot of flavor there from that butternut squash um, stock, mm. which I really like. That is a really tough one. So, I really like Giada's. I mean, it. what I love about it is it's very similar to the risotto a la Milanese, which is the traditional risotto. And then at the same time, it, it just, it has that similar evolution of the paella flavor with it. So I, just for the creamy consistency and texture, and, and I love the vanilla and the butternut squash combo. I'm going with Giada, it's fall, it's perfect. I agree, I think I'm gonna have to go with Giada too. It is a very close call. I do really, really like mine, but it's fall, it's just got that lovely flavor with the vanilla, the butternut squash. I'm a fan of butternut squash. Uh, I really like it, so close call. But I think the winner today is Giada De Laurentiis but in a squash risotto. Well done, BC. Well done. And in close second, Alton Brown with his wild mushroom and asparagus risotto. It was very good. I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, again, and you can use any mushroom in that. Hen of the Woods would be great as well. Mm. Ah, very but nice. that was that was great. But Giada De Laurentiis. My name is BC Hoffman. And I am Judith Jones. And this has been Recipe Wars. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our channel, you keep watching, and we'll keep cooking.